What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your lives to the fullest. Today is an absolutely beautiful day. It's like the perfect temperature and we have blue skies, which is why I am reviewing the 2023 Toyota Highlander XSE. Huge thank you to Arlo Guthrie over at Oarsman Toyota of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Highlander or, or any Toyota product, I'll be sure to have Arlo's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. Jumping right into the video, first let's talk about the exterior and performance. So like I said, this is a 2023 Toyota Highlander XSE. This particular one is all wheel drive and it is painted in magnetic gray metallic which in my personal opinion is probably one of the better colors to get on the XSE. Again, that's just my personal opinion, but I think it looks great in collaboration with the black accents that you guys get with the XSE. But the first thing I wanted to point out was the sporty hood lines with the two bulges on both sides of the hood. So you guys can see that little indent here and then you get those two bulges both on the driver side and on the passenger side just to give this thing an aggressive look up here at the front end. But let's jump right into the headlights. So with the XSE, you guys do get LED projector headlights. With automatic high beams, you guys also get an LED daytime running light strip as well as also with the XSE, you get a black headlight bezel and LED fog lights towards the bottom of your front bumper. Now, what makes the XSE the XSE is this black mesh front grille with the black grille surround. So you guys can take a closer look at that. And then at the center of your black mesh grille is where you will find your Toyota logo. One thing I wanted to point out that's just below your upper grille is where you will find your lower grille. However, your upper grille is a gloss black mesh but when you work your way down to the lower grill it turns into like a metallic gray type color and they're more of like grill bars rather than that black mesh just something i thought you guys might be interested in knowing and then you get some silver trim below your lower grill now with the xse toyota actually calls this front bumper the sporty front bumper i mean that is literally what it says on the window sticker and then also at the bottom of the front bumper with the xse you guys do get a lower front splitter which is pretty cool and then all the way at the bottom so i think this is kind of what they consider the uh front splitter is like that silver trim piece but then just below that like right about here you get some gloss black trim uh, i'll give you actually i don't know if that's gloss black that looks more like a gray metallic trim to me rather than the gloss black but one more thing while we are up here at the front end you guys get eight inches of ground clearance with the XSE. Now working our way down along the side, you guys do get these gloss black accent side blades on both sides of the front bumper again, just to give this thing a sportier look. They are not functional, but they do look pretty cool. Um, yeah, so thought I'd point that out. You guys also do get some satin black wheel arch moldings. And then with the XSE, you guys do get a sport tuned independent front suspension with a stabilizer bar. So this is basically like the sporty trim level of the Highlander. Um, so you get a sport tuned suspension with that being said. Now, also, I'm going to keep saying with the XSC, with the XSC, with the XSC, but it's true. So with the XSC, you guys do get these 20 inch gloss black wheels wrapped in 235, 55 Goodyear Eagle Touring tires. I'll give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires as best as I can and as best as the camera will pick them up. I do like the wheel design themselves. I think they look really, really sweet. And then this particular XSE has been optioned with the $129 mud guards, which can be found behind all four of your wheels and tires. But working our way back up to the midline of the Highlander, one of the things I wanted to point out is that on your A-pillar, you kind of have like this satin black, kind of like wrapping is almost what it is. So this piece here, all the way to up there is satin black, and then you guys do get gloss black mirror caps. But one thing that's pretty cool is that here in the direct sunlight, I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but you kind of have some blue metallic flake, which I think is really, really cool, because most of the time when somebody says they have gloss black mirror caps, 
they're basically just gloss black but that kind of just makes it a little bit fun with that metallic flake but you guys also do get integrated turn signals these side view mirrors are heated you get your blind spot monitoring on the left hand side of your driver's side mirror and then over there about right there on the right hand side of your passenger side mirror these side view mirrors are power adjustable and they are also manual folding so you do not get a power folding option with the xse and then working our way up to the top of the roof line you guys do get black roof rails as well as some black window trim you get body color door handles with keyless access just keep in mind that the keyless access function is only on your front two doors so your rear two doors do not get that keyless access function and then this particular one has been optioned with the 250 dollars body side moldings which can be found right here and they are body color and then you guys also get this l-shaped body line that kind of starts at your front driver door and then works your way into the rear end it actually looks pretty cool uh, and I'll put a little b-roll on screen so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about but then working our way down you guys do get body color rocker panels with a silver trim accent piece all the way at the bottom of your passenger doors just to give this thing you know a little bit of color other than just the black and the body color accents but again you guys do get those satin black wheel arch moldings above your rear wheel and tire setup opening up this fuel door you do have to open it up from the interior but that is where you would fill up the vehicle with fuel you guys do get a body color shark fin antenna as well as you get a body color roof spoiler with an integrated led third brake light with the xse you also do get an intermittent rear wiper which is displayed on screen now also you get LED taillights. You get a chrome Toyota logo located at the center of your power liftgate. Just below that Toyota logo is where you will find your backup camera. Now, one gripe that I do have with the Highlander is that I do wish the backup camera clarity was just a touch better. It should be. Um, so I'll show you guys that when we move into the interior. It's not quite as good as I would like it to be. However, the rest of the car is really good, so it kind of makes up for that. But you guys do get your chrome badging on the bottom of the tailgate. But like I mentioned, you guys do get a height adjustable power lift gate with jam protection. So we might as well open it up. A couple ways you can open it up. You can either open it up from the button in the interior. You can also open it up from the button on the key fob right there. But opening up the trunk, you guys do have quite a bit of storage space back here with the third row seats down. So right now the third row seats are down. If the third row seats were up, this is about where uh, your storage base would be from about right here to right there with, again, the third row seats up. But right now, the third row seats are down. You guys also do, uh, in this particular one, have the optional $358 all-weather mats with the cargo liner. So your all-weather mats, I believe, are located in there. And then you guys have this all-weather floor liner that says Highlander on it. So again, quite a bit of storage space back here. You get a little storage cubby on the driver's side but you do not get one of those little storage cubbies on the passenger side. A couple options back here that this particular one has is that this does have the $25 first aid kit, which is located right here. That is the first aid kit bag. This also does have the $70 quick charge cables. And uh, basically what it is, is what is displayed on screen basically so you guys can plug into a 12 volt outlet and you basically get uh, a couple more usb ports if that makes sense but you also get a 179 dollars cargo cover but you're like well i don't see it where is it so if you guys flip this up and pull up on this little knot here uh, that will reveal your stuff to replace your spare tire as well as your cargo cover which is located right there so this cargo cover again which is right here is a 179 dollar option that you guys could either get or you can skip but this particular one does have it but again, you do get a height adjustable power lift gate. So if I press this button right here, the power lift gate will begin to close. A couple more things while we are here on the back end. You guys do get two reflectors on both sides of your rear bumper. One right there, one right there. You get a satin black rear balance, as you might be able to tell. You do get a silver trim piece that goes across the entire rear valence. Again, satin black rear valence, and then you do get a dual tipped exhaust system. And then if you guys were wondering about the max tow capacity, the max tow capacity of this particular Highlander XSE is 5,000 pounds. Let me know what you guys think of that towing capacity in the comments down below. Personally, I think that's right on par with pretty much all the other vehicles, at least in this class. But 
when we get further on into the video which we're about to jump into performance there is something new for 2023 that you guys will be able to see when i pop open the hood but so far let me know in the comments what you guys think of the design on the 2023 highlander xse again i think this thing looks super sporty and what's great about it is that it looks great it handles great and it's also great reliability wise but let's move into performance Popping open that hood reveals the new for 2023 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder that makes 265 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. It is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 7.3 seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 21 miles per gallon in the city, 28 miles per gallon on the highway for 24 miles per gallon combined with all wheel drive. If you guys do want all wheel drive with dynamic torque vectoring, that is a $1,950 option. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. I wanted to say thank you all for helping me hit 10,000 subscribers. That has been a long time goal of mine and we have finally done it. So thank you guys so much. But now that we've hit 10,000, we are on our journey to 100,000. So if you guys have found any value in this video so far today, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, but let's move into the interior. Moving into the interior, a couple of the functions I wanted to show you guys on the key fob. You have your lock function, your unlock function. You can open up your power lift gate and obviously you have your panic function. But one thing that's pretty cool is that on the key fob itself, it has the Toyota logo and then it also has your Highlander lettering, which I think is pretty cool. Just a nice touch uh, just to give it, you know, a, a, an exclusive feel when you guys get the Highlander. But like I mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video, you do get keyless access, but you only get keyless access on the front two doors. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across these two hash marks right here. And you can tell that the vehicle locks because you get those couple of beeps. Put your hand behind the door handle, the vehicle unlocks again, you get another couple of beeps and that will let you into the interior. One of the things I wanted to highlight before moving into the interior Interior, is that you know it's bad when a Japanese car has more US slash Canada parts content than what you would find in a Buick or a Lincoln. Come on, Buick, come on, Lincoln. Look at this, final assembly point, USA, engine parts, USA, transmission parts, USA, Toyota, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you guys for supporting the US. But taking a look at the driver's side door panel, you guys do get some vinyl wrapping at the top of the door panel. You get some gray trim right here. You get some faux leather right here. They actually call it soft text uh, upholstery. So that is what this is right here. So basically you get soft text upholstery from right here to right there. Um, so that is all that soft text upholstery. You get an aluminum door handle. This is to control your power side view mirrors. That is to restrict your passenger window privileges. Lock the vehicle, unlock the vehicle. You guys get automatic up and down windows at all four corners, which is very, very nice. You get a nicely padded armrest. Great spot you can close the door with. You get some aluminum trim. Working our way on down. You get some black plastic from right here all the way down. You also get a light. Get a little bit of miscellaneous storage base here. And then you got a spot right here that you guys could set a Deer Park water bottle. Maybe you can fit a smart water bottle down in there, uh, but that would be that would be uh, cutting it close a little bit. But stepping down into the interior, this is what the seats look like. So these again are called the black Softex trimmed seats. So basically Softex all the way around and then in the center you have some cloth uh, with a nice pattern on it. You do get power and heated front seats with the XSE. This is what your seat controls look like, but let's step into the interior and let's see what the XSE has to offer here on the interior. I kind of had a feeling I had a spider on me because I could feel like spider webs and stuff like that. But this is what it looks like. So like I mentioned, you do get keyless access. So that also means you get push button start. All you gotta do to start the vehicle is push your foot down on the brake, make sure the key fob is with you in the interior and then push to start. And that is what it sounds like when the 2.4 liter fires up. But I'm gonna close that door right here. And uh, we're gonna start here, then we'll work our way to the passenger side and then into those rear seats. I don't think I'm gonna get into the third row seats uh, because they've got that stuff blocking them, but I will show you guys the first and the second row. I'm gonna roll the windows down because it is a little bit hot in here, excuse that. I was testing out the audio system, which by the way, the standard one is pretty good. If you guys wanna get a better one, I'll get into the packages that you guys have to get uh, with that later on in the video. But 
I want to show you guys what's going on over here. So that is to turn your automatic high beams on or off. That is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. And then just below your automatic high beams button is where you will find the button to open and or close your power lift gate. And then opening this up, you get a little bit of storage space in here. You can set one of those like small little Purell hand sanitizer things down in there. Um, but that's kind of for size reference because really not that much storage space down in there. Like you couldn't set your sunglasses in there. Then down here, that is to open your fuel door. And then up top here, this is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. And then this is to reset your odometer trip. So right now we got trip A. If I press and hold on that, you guys can see the values reset it back down to zero. So that is how you reset your trip information stuff. But let's take a look at our turn signal stock. So not only is this your turn signal stock, this is also your high beam control stock, this is your headlight control stock, and this is your fog light control stock. But first, let's take a listen to our turn signals. That is what the turn signals sound like. So right now, if I flip this all the way down, that turns your headlights off as well as your daytime running lights off. So now none of the lights are on up front. That is headlights in automatic. Flip that up once, that is your parking lights on, and then flip that up all the way, and that keeps your headlights in the always on position. And then right here, that's to turn your fog lights on, that's to turn your fog lights off. But I don't believe you can turn your fog lights on in the automatic position. So you can see the fog lights are not on unless like it was nighttime and your headlights were on, then your fog lights would be on. But right now that it's daytime, I have my headlights in the automatic mode. My fog lights will not turn on, but watch what happens when I turn my headlights in the always on position. Now my fog lights will turn on. Just something I thought I'd point out to the uh, to you guys uh, who were interested in knowing something like that. But you also do get a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And what I mean by that is that you can pull the steering wheel towards you, you can push it away from you, and then you can also move it up and down. But again, that is manual. And then this is a look at the steering wheel. So right now, I'm gonna let the owner take this little plastic piece off, you know, so they can kind of feel special when they buy their vehicle. But you guys do get that soft, text trimmed steering wheel with some accent colored stitching on the insides of the steering wheel but before we get into the steering wheel controls let's take a listen to our horn that is what the horn sounds like in the 2023 highlander so on the left hand side of the steering wheel you have these arrows here as well as this back button and the ok button that is to control your seven inch gauge cluster display which is located between your rpm and your speedometer and then before we get into that, I wanna show you guys the other button. So that is to bring you into your phone screen on the infotainment system. That is to speak to the vehicle. That is to volume down. That is to volume up. And then as standard with the Highlander XSE, you guys do get adaptive cruise control. So over here are your adaptive cruise control settings as well as like your lane keeping setting. Um, so if you click that, you can see the steering assist is active as well as lane centering is active, but I'm gonna turn that back off. And then you can see this mode button. This is to switch between your different AM, FM, XM, Amazon Music, Sirius XM, all your different modes. You can see right now I'm switching between my different modes. You also can switch between your Bluetooth audio stuff, which it is connected to right now. And then that is to go back on a track. That is to go forward on a track. And then this is your windshield wiper control stock for your front windshield wipers and your rear wiper uh, located at the back. But now let's go throughout our gauge cluster. So on the left-hand side of the gauge cluster, you have your RPM gauge. On the right-hand side of the gauge cluster, you have your speedometer. This is your fuel gauge as well. And then you have your coolant temperature gauge located with your RPM gauge. But again, now let's go throughout our seven inch display on the infotainment system. Bear with me while I move my camera just a touch. So now this is one of the screens. I'm gonna go all the way uh, back up to the top screen and then we'll work our way down. So this is your fuel economy screen. I'm not sure how well you guys are gonna be able to see it right now. I might have to move into the shade, so bear with me for the second. All right, that should be a little bit better. So this is your fuel economy screen. If I click over to the right, that brings me into the eco indicator and then you also have your digital speedometer readout. Personally, if this was my vehicle, this is the screen that I would leave it on because it's just easier to read your speedometer this way rather than having some other stuff and then your digital speedometer reader being up like in that corner. So again, this is the screen I would leave it in. That's your time. That is not the accurate time uh, as of right now, but 
that is where you will find your time. That is the ambient exterior temperature that lets us know that we are in park. And that is your trip A information stuff that I reset by clicking on this button over here. But back into the screen, I'm gonna click this down arrow and then we'll go throughout the other screen. So right now, this is like your driving support stuff. And you guys can see what I was talking about by your uh, or speedometer moving up to there. Again, I would rather have it on the other screen, but this is your audio information stuff going down one more this is like your safety sat status stuff so you can either have it be on your tire pressure screen you can have it be on your all-wheel drive screen so it basically shows like how much um, each wheel is using the in the all-wheel drive system if that makes sense and then clicking over all the way to the right that brings you into your safety system status basically stating that your post collision or pre collision system is working your blind spot system is working and your rear cross traffic alert uh, are all ready to go going down one more this is how you go into your setting screen so I'm just gonna click over to the right and that will bring me into this screen that will bring me into this screen or that will bring me into these other different screens you guys can turn the settings on or off by clicking on that you can go into your uh, if you press and hold on this that will bring you into your detailed stuff so basically I'm not gonna go all the way throughout this screen um, but yeah you do have quite a few different things that you guys can do on the screen and then this is just like your uh, alerts so right now the only alert that uh, is going on is that I don't have my seatbelt on but again this is the screen that I would personally leave my Highlander in because just you know it helps you from not getting a speeding ticket at least it helps me from not getting a speeding ticket but working our way over to here that is where you will find your push button start function and then this particular xse has the standard eight inch infotainment system with wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto connectivity which works very very well so right now my phone is not connected to the screen but you do get a volume knob which is very nice i do not like when you have to touch for the volume stuff but let's go throughout our screen we'll stop for, or start from the top and work our way down to the bottom so this is your navigation stuff click down one more this is your um, audio stuff so right now my phone is connected I can go in between my different sources so I can go in between the radio which brings you into your AM your FM or your Sirius XM stuff then you have your Bluetooth audio and then down here you get your Apple music stuff and then all the way at the bottom you have your Amazon music and then if you click up into here that will bring you into your different devices so you can see my phone is connected you can add another device or you can delete a device etc going into my phone stuff Stuff. my phone is connected it's just you know um, you, what you can do is you can click into here you can either use your phone for the phone you can use your phone for the media or you can use your phone for the Apple CarPlay and right now I only have it selected on the media so that is why it is not letting me go into the phone screen so if I flipped that on now it would let me go into my phone so now I can go into the phone stuff so now that is what the phone screen looks like click down one more this is the vehicle stuff so you can go between your different climate control stuff you can go into your trip information stuff that is what one trip information screen and then you can go between your vehicle alert stuff so right now there are no vehicle alerts and then this is your setting stuff so you can go between your personal your general your Wi-Fi etc etc sound and media you can adjust the different uh, sounds and stuff so very customizable and a very very easy to use screen and then this is where you will find your time that lets us know that we're connected to Bluetooth that's how much battery my phone has and that that's how much signal my phone has as well working our way down this is a tri zone climate control vehicle and this is what your screen looks like up at the front so right now it's displaying the rear temperature I actually turned the uh, fan for the front off but that is what the screen looks like. And then you've got your dial uh, to turn the um, temperature up or down for the driver. Same thing over there for the passenger. If you guys want to turn the fan up, this is how you turn the fan up. And you can also sync the rear by clicking on that. So now it's all synced and now um, it is not synced. And then if you guys want to turn this screen off, all you got to do, boom, click that right there and then the fan will turn off. Like I mentioned to you guys, with the XSE, you guys do get power front seats and you get heated front seats. So you get heated front seats with three levels of adjustability. This is the passenger side, three levels of adjustability as well. You get two HVAC vents right here, 
this is your hazard button and then also with the xsc as standard you guys do get a wireless charging pad i have an iphone 14 pro max and my iphone 14 pro max will fit in there no problem you get a little alert on the screen letting you know that the phone is starting to charge and then uh, working our way down a bit you have another spot you can set your phone right here if you wanted to as well great spot again that's an iphone 14 pro max and it fits down there no problem working our way to the right that's a usb a port you get two usb c ports and a 12 volt power outlet located right there then you get a little bit more miscellaneous storage space so if i wanted to set my phone um horizontally i could do that as well so boom it fits down there again you get two cup holders one right here one over there this is like one of those small yeti um things right there and it fits in there let's see if my brittle water bottle will fit in there that fits in there as well so pretty good cup holder size and what's funny about toyota is that toyota actually flexes how many cup holders are in their vehicles so this vehicle does have 14 cup holders if you guys were interested in that so you also do get a leather wrapped shift knob um, at least it feels like leather i don't know if it is actually leather but if you guys want to go into manual mode put it into drive flip this over to the left pull down to downshift push up to upshift and that is how you can drive this thing sporty if that's what you wanted to do but moving our way down just a little bit this is your drive mode selector so all the way at the top you have your uh, sport mode flip that down once that puts you into normal mode and then flip that down all the way and that puts you into your eco mode so again you guys have three different drive modes sport normal and eco and then if you guys want to you know go do some off-roading i guess these would be maybe considered uh drive mode you have your mud and sand mode by flipping that over to the left now we're in mud and sand and then if i flip that over to the right that puts us in rock and dirt and then if you guys want to go back into normal mode all you got to do is click on that and then that puts you right back into normal mode so very very easy to use this is your electronic parking brake right now it is engaged you can tell it's engaged because you have that little red light on it if you guys want to disengage it all you got to do push your foot down on the brake and then push down on that and then the parking brake will disengage this also does have the auto hold feature so if you guys are stuck in traffic you're tired of holding your foot down on the brake by yourself you guys press on that button the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system very very nice feature and then pressing on this button right here is hill descent control this will put you into your snow mode and then that is to turn traction control on or off one thing that i found you know kind of interesting about the highlander is take a look at how you open up your center fold down armrest it's not a fold down armrest you pull that back and then it goes back down in there so pretty interesting i have not seen that uh, on other vehicles but you have a little divider right here you can set your phone i believe you can also take this divider out if you wanted to as well and then opening that up and see pretty much my whole forearm fits down in there so quite a bit of storage space down in there and then you also do get a 12 volt power outlet located about right there uh, but other than that there's no other connectivity other than that 12 volt outlet and I can put uh, this thing back down in here if I wanted to. So then slide that forward. And that's really about it for that. And then this is also nicely padded. Um, so if you guys rest your arm here on a road trip, it is actually pretty comfortable there on the old elbow. But working over to here, you have another spot that you guys can set a phone if you wanted to. Great spot you can set a phone over there for the passenger. Um, so yeah, quite a bit of storage space over there. Um, you guys can also set other things other than a phone. Working our way down, you do get a lockable glove box with a decent amount of storage space. I've seen more storage space in other vehicles, but right now you got your owner's manual in there and you guys can see, you can fit some napkins, you can fit some straws um, and you know, a couple other small miscellaneous items. Uh, but other than that, you know, you're not gonna fit the big items down in there passenger side door panel looks very similar to the driver's side you guys get an auto dimming rear view mirror with your universal garage door opener so if you guys have three different garage bays at your house you can open up those three different garage bays individually with these three different buttons you can also turn the auto dimming rear view mirror on or off by the push of that button so you can see that green light went away press it again and now the green light is back on letting you know that the auto dimming rear view mirror is on great spot you can set a some sunglasses up top here you also have like one of these things where you can see your rear passengers and your front passenger if you wanted to get that little fish eye mirror and then that is to turn your driver light on passenger light on boom boom if you guys want the lights to turn on when you open up the doors flip that thing to the center and now all the interior lights turn on 
when you open up the door. If you guys wanna just turn all the interior dome lights on, let's say at night, you can do that as well. And then you can also turn it off. So when now when I open up the door, the lights do not turn on. So just something I thought I'd point out. Get your SOS button right there. And then the XSE also comes standard with a sunroof that slides and also tilts up like that. So that is to slide it. So this will slide it backwards and then this will tilt it up just like that. This is your Bluetooth mic pickup for your Bluetooth phone. Same thing over there for your passenger. Let's take a look at the visor. Opening it up, you do get a vanity mirror with a vanity light located up the top here. Let's see if this thing slides forwards and backwards. Boom, boom, slides forward, it slides backwards. Very, very nice. Driver gets an Opu handle. The front passenger also gets an Opu handle. And I did want to go over a couple things. So one of the first options I wanted to mention to you guys is, which is really, there's like two options, but they're basically the same thing. One of them comes with red seats. The other one comes with just these black seats here. And uh, this is one option that I would recommend you guys maybe consider getting, right? So this is the optional $1,375 12.3 inch infotainment system with the 11 speaker JBL system with a subwoofer. So if you guys, you know, really like audio, you guys li listening to music and stuff like that, Honestly, I think the standard sound system is really good. You know, it's good enough for those of you guys who don't like really, really like to jam out to your music. You know, if you really, really like to jam out to music, I would recommend getting that package because I know the JBL sound system sounds really, really good. This standard sound system still sounds good, but I'm telling you guys, the JBLs is just that much better. So if you guys like audio, you guys want a bigger screen, that might be the option package to get. Obviously, you don't have to get it. Just thought I would recommend it. Uh, but again, it's just a $1,375 option. Now, a couple features that uh, come standard safety-wise are Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus, which includes a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane trace assist, automatic high beams, road, road sign assist, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. Now I'm gonna throw the government safety ratings on screen so you guys can see the overall vehicle score, five stars, frontal crash, four stars for the driver and the passengers. The side crash, five stars, and rollover, you get four stars. Now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen for you guys to read over. You guys can take a look at the optional stuff that this one has as well as the standard stuff, but I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Toyota Highlander XSC all-wheel drive is spec'd is $47,841. Honestly, I think that's a pretty darn good price considering how nice of a vehicle this is, how good of a vehicle this looks. It actually has quite a bit of power and uh, overall, it's just a great vehicle and you know it's gonna be reliable because it's a Toyota. But let me know what you guys think of this thing from the exterior, from the performance, and from the interior's perspective. Let me know what you guys think. But I do wanna show you guys what's going on in those rear seats before we move into the driving portion of the review. So taking a look at these rear seats. The rear door panel looks very similar to what you would find in the front. However, you do get this nice big rear window shade for your second row passengers. You get an aluminum door handle, you get an automatic up and down window in the second row, and then you get a nicely padded armrest with some more of that soft text upholstery. You get a spot right here and here that you guys could set some Deer Park water bottles, and then you get a little bit of miscellaneous storage base right there. But this is what your second row seats look like. As you guys can see, you do get a center fold down armrest. You also get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat as well as behind the passenger seat. You get your two dome lights up top here as well as your HVAC vent and another one over there. You get an Opu panel as well as a spot you can set your dry cleaning. And then same thing over here, Opu panel and a spot you can set your dry cleaning. Like I mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video, this is a tri-zone climate control vehicle. This is what your climate control looks like back here. And then down here, you get two USB-C ports and then you get two cup holders, a good amount of miscellaneous storage base. And then this is what your third row seats look like boom right there again this is a highlander so you do get three rows of seating if you guys want to fold the seats down all you got to do is pull up on that and then the third row seats will begin to drop and they drop down just like that so i am adjusted behind myself i am five foot nine i've got plenty of leg room plenty of knee room and plenty of headroom as well i can also recline the second row seat both forwards and backwards but you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Highlander. So 
I want to see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well so I'll see you guys in the driver's seat all right guys and now on to the driving portion of the review take a listen does it sound like a four-cylinder yes does it have the power of a v6 yes it's actually pretty darn peppy and this motor is new to the highlander for 2023 so again it is a 2.4 liter turbo four-cylinder i believe it makes 265 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque i know that torque number is correct i'm not 100 sure on that horsepower figure uh, but i'll correct myself on screen if that is incorrect but it actually has really or quite good pickup um so it's a great little motor you know what i mean uh and you know it's going to be reliable because it is a toyota after all so overall man i love the way that it pulls it's got great power the um the fuel economy is actually pretty good considering the size of this vehicle and that it has all-wheel drive so between the power between the fuel economy and between it having all-wheel drive i think the fuel economy numbers are very very good but also you know it is a highlander it is the xse so it has the sport tuned suspension so you may be asking yourself well does it ride like super firm like what's the suspension feel feel like and i'm here to answer the question it handles really really well like around turns and stuff like that it remains flat there's very very minimal body roll but it also you know cruising you know just in the speed limit we're going over bumps and stuff like that yes it is like a, a touch like a touch firm but it's a nice happy medium between firmness and comfortableness if that makes sense to you guys so i love the way that it handles so with that touch of firmness i think it more than makes up for it with its handling and also it's not firm like i'm just saying that it is a touch firm so don't like think don't like say be like oh he said it's firm it's a firm suspension i'm not getting it because it is firm but it's also very very comfortable as well which is something that i appreciate so overall i really like the way that this thing drives um it's got great get up and go i think it looks really really good and i know looks can be subjective um so it's dependent on the person whether you guys think this thing looks good or not but i think it's got a really sporty look to it and it, honestly it's appealing like if i had a family um who you know had you know three two something like that kids this is a great vehicle because you know when you get into the tahoes and that class of vehicles not only does the fuel economy suffer from that but also it's a big it's a bulky vehicle granted it does have more storage base it has more capability when it comes to towing large things like a car like a boat stuff like that so it does that stuff better but if you guys don't tow stuff you guys don't need a ton of storage space then the highlander in vehicles in this class might be something that you guys might want to take a look at because the fuel economy is good it's comfortable it's reliable um and with the xse with the sport tuned suspension it handles really darn well considering what it is and i'll show you guys that when we go around these twisties here um in a minute so these are the twisties that i'm in uh, in question here so we'll see how the uh, highlander does so like i mentioned earlier on in the video the body roll is actually to a minimum. So let's see how it does over here on this turn. Very flat around those turns, impressively flat actually. Um, and what about this one as well? I'm telling you guys, this is like, obviously you're not gonna be able to take this thing to like a track or something, but on twisties and stuff like that, if you guys own one or if you guys go and test drive one, and you go around turns and stuff like that you guys will know what i'm talking about it handles very very well i'm going to do a little acceleration here uh, on this turn not on the turn but when i get straightened out so let's see how it does acceleration wise i'm just going to floor it in three two one So you guys can see, I mean, it's got plenty of get up and go. You know, initially I am in eco mode, so the throttle response isn't quite there. But if you guys want better throttle response, throw it into sport mode. So now when I give it gas, it's right there instantly. So uh, eco mode definitely like, I guess suffers throttle response wise, but that's the point of eco mode. Eco mode isn't, you know, to have a sporty feel when driving. The point of eco mode is to be able to get better fuel economy it's gonna lessen your throttle response for better fuel economy at least that is the idea again here's another turn 
and it just remains so flat so planted around turns um so i mean overall this is a great great vehicle again if you guys want a good or a better sound system than what you guys get stock i believe it's a 1375 dollars option for the 12.3 inch screen and the 11 speaker jbl sound system so again if you guys like sound systems you guys like jamming out to music that might be an option to consider getting and for the price honestly because you get the big screen and the sound system i think it's worth it um and plus that's like the only big package that you guys can really get on this car other than that there are no real other big options um so that might be one that you might want to spring for and i think even with that uh as an option you're still looking at getting one of these xses for under fifty thousand dollars so i think that is a great price for the reliability for the looks for the power and for the overall feel of the highlander so honestly if you guys are looking at getting a three-row suv you don't want to spend more than fifty thousand dollars i suggest that you guys go out and at least take a look at the highlander xse i think you guys will be like this is a really nice vehicle for the price you know starting in like 2021 is kind of when vehicle prices started getting really out of hand and i think that this price for what you get is not out of hand i think it's a good value for what you get again i think the power is great and uh, just the overall driving experience is really really good but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button thank you guys so much again for helping me hit 10,000 subscribers that has began been a very long term goal of mine and we finally hit that goal so feels great but now that we've hit 10 again we're on our journey to 100,000 subscribers. So if you guys got any value out of this video, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. That stuff greatly helps my channel grow. So I would really appreciate it if you guys would do that. But again, that's it for today's video. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.